Bendamustine and rituximab is the standard of care for the treatment of relapsed refractory CLL. However, it's an imperfect standard of care. The uh, median uh, progression-free survival is about a year. Um, and clearly we want to be able to improve upon that. Um, so one way to improve upon a standard of care like that is, uh, I, I sort of refer to it as you can beat them or you can join them. Um, and uh, this study asked the question, well, if I take the standard of care and I add a new drug, and in this case it was uh, the drug idelalisib, um, can I get a better outcome? So does this new agent add to bendamustine rituximab? So what is this new agent? Idelalisib is a a PI3 kinase delta inhibitor. It's a first-in-class drug. It's already approved for relapse refractory CLL for patients who are not candidates for chemotherapy. And uh, in combination with rituximab, it is quite active in relapse refractory CLL. Um, but this study was asking the more common patient who really can get chemotherapy can we improve upon that standard chemotherapy by adding the idelalisib? Um, so that's exactly what we did. It was a prospective randomized placebo-controlled trial. Um, half the patients, uh, actually 209 patients, got bendamustine rituximab plus the placebo. Uh, 207 got idelalisib plus the uh, bendamustine rituximab. And the primary endpoint for the study was progression-free survival. Um, there was a planned interim analysis after 67% of the planned events, and that just happened to occur in October. The IDMC met, um, and there was evidence of overwhelming efficacy, so there was a recommendation that the study be stopped and released, um, which is uh, why we submitted it as a late-breaking abstract to ASH, and fortunately it was accepted. Um, and the, the overwhelming efficacy that was seen was that there was an improvement in progression-free survival from 11.1 months to 23.1 months, so there was an increase of a year um, in progression-free survival, representing a 67% reduction in the risk of progression or death. Um, in addition, uh, a number of secondary endpoints were reached, but importantly, overall survival. So even though the median overall survival was not reached in either arm, there was a 45% reduction in the risk of death with the addition of idelalisib to the standard of bendamustine rituximab. So, um, and this was all done with a level of toxicity and side effects that were somewhat greater with the combination, but certainly manageable and in line with what we expect to see um, from using idelalisib, which does have some toxicities associated with it. PI3 kinase is a critical signal, it's part of a critical signaling pathway in multiple cell types, not just in CLL cells, but across cancers. And uh, so, the, but there are different, what we call isoforms, different types, and there's an alpha, a beta, a gamma, and a delta. Um, many of the early um, PI3 kinase drugs that were developed were what we call pan-PI3 kinase. They, they inhibited all the isoforms. The problem is, is that there's dose-limiting toxicity that uh, prevents you from getting to reasonable doses where the drug starts to have activity in CLO. The delta isoform is particularly attractive because it's um, seen really only in white blood cells. So it gives us a much more targeted approach where we cannot worry about the other toxicities that we see when we hit a lot of alpha, for instance. Um, and because PI3 kinase delta is a critical signaling molecule in CLL cells, it's an excellent target. Um, and uh, the, uh, using this delta isoform allows us to have that selectivity. For uh, patients who you're planning to treat with rituximab bendamustine, um, addition of a pathway inhibitor uh, such as uh, idelalisib uh, clearly improves progression-free and overall survival um, and adds to the standard of care um, uh, treatment.